I, uh, um, I won't be too loud. How many big round of applause for Mark the Edge Edge for leading us all day? And, and I too have a, a witty radio name as well, Jeff. <laughs> How many of you have a Gaston flag hanging over your uh, house right now? Show me hands. Eric. How about two? You got two? All right, so in my presentations, you got to stay awake. All right, who else? Way back here. All right. I'll give you a few more. Where are we going right here? My last one. I'll give you a special prize here in a minute. Oh. So, I do have a radio show here in New Hampshire. I have had Tom Woods on. My radio show is on Clear Channel. The big bad enemy, and yet I bring libertarians and conservatives together and put them on that radio. And you guys are here today. How many of you have ever been to a tea party? Raise your hands. Great. How many of you have ever been to your city council complaining about something? Raise your hands. How many of you have ever been to your school board complaining about something? Raise your hand. Any Bedford people here? <laughs> Bedford? Bedford? I'm sorry. Bedford, Bedford, I'm sorry about your school board as well. You have a living, breathing constitution. Were you aware of that? That's what that would give you. You guys are tired, aren't you? You just getting energized? I'm glad to hear that. How many of you woke up this morning and go, I don't know if I want to go to this thing? How many of you said, I'm not sure if I want to go to that school board meeting? I don't know how many more tea parties I go to. Go ahead, be honest. Raise your hands. You're tired, aren't you? And so were the patriots before us. They were tired as well. How many of you have ever heard of a saying called a line in the sand? A line in the sand. And throughout history, individuals have drawn that line in the sand long before us. And that saying is more than just a saying. It is an absolute statement of resolve. But you remember when you were a little kid and you drew that line in the stand? And you said, no, cross this. I double dog dare you not to cross it. And the person crossed it, didn't they? And you probably did this and drew another line. Don't you cross that. And they crossed it again. The line in the stand is only as strong as the people who stand over that line and defend it and clench their fists and put that sneer on and say, not here today, not over my body. It takes people of principle, people of integrity, and people of commitment to stand by that line. I want the next group of people to stand up. How many of you are veterans of our military? Stand up, stand up. and they stood over that line. And while you slept at night, and while your parents stood in their kitchen, and while your children went to school, these young men and gentlemen, now a little bit older, guarded your freedom and liberty. That line in the sand had been set. And there are other instances of that line in the sand. Whether it was 300 Spartans along with their allies who stood there looking at 100,000 Persians, and behind them, a soon united country of Greece. They stood by that line. Whether it was a small shepherd boy with nothing more than a rock, he walked forth on that battlefield, took his sling out, and brought down a giant and created a country called Israel. A line in the sand. We all face it every single day. But if we are not prepared to put our feet firmly where they belong, like that time when we were little kids, the sign is saying it's just washed away. Wiped away, not in existence. And our founding fathers, they faced those lines too. 
before they gave us the Declaration, before they gave us the Constitution, they kept talking to the king. Now, it took a little bit longer than we have it today. They put a message on a boat, a boat would go across the Atlantic Ocean, please stop, no more, please stop, no more, line in the sand. Wipe that line away, and the king laughed at them. Another line in the sand, please don't tax us anymore, please stop. Wipe that line away, move back a little bit more. But at some point, they got mad. And our founding fathers put the ultimate sign, sand line down. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object confined to a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such governments and provide a new guard for the future security of a government. A new guard. And that's what they did. Many of the people that appeared before you today told you a lot of things, gave you a lot of words, a lot of ancient words. And you have to think to yourself, how valid are they now? And I know what most of you are going to say. I'm going to share a little secret with you. I am proud to say this to you right now. I was born in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I was raised in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. My mother was a debutante from Massachusetts. My father was a hillbilly from West Virginia. I was born to be a liberal Democrat. And somehow, something got screwed up. And I tell you I was born in Portsmouth, New Hampshire because I'm gonna share a few things with you. Today, all of you are New Hampshireites. If you are here today, if you are here at this line in the sand, I officially, by the honor invested in me as someone born in this state, make you all New Hampshireites. And why is that important? Because it has always been New Hampshire that no matter what has drawn that line in the sand and has never, ever backed away from it. Dan told you about the Patriots from Portsmouth and Summersworth and Durham, the Sons of Liberty. They got together one night. Now remember, I asked you guys, you're all tired? You can't go to city council meetings anymore? You come home late at night? Your husband or your wife goes, where the hell you been? I thought it was going to be an hour. It's six hours later, and you don't know what to say to them. Well, these same Patriots got together as Sons of Liberty, did the same thing. They left their house and said, dear, we got a meeting down in Portsmouth. We're going to go find out what's going on. We're going to go down there. Well, and behold, they get down there, have a few pints, because Patriots in New England always need a few pints. And someone said, William and Mary is right over there. Let's go. Now, you can imagine them when they get home late at night. Gunpowder all over them. I'm tired. Where have you been? I don't know. I think we started a revolution today. The first armed insurrection in, New H in the country was in New Hampshire. And they took those, those gunpowder and they took those cannons and they brought them down to Bunker Hill. Here's something you don't know about that, though. The largest contingent of Sons of Liberty came from New Hampshire. 1,000 strong stood on those hills. They engaged the enemy before they even got to the hill, and they marched on. Our great, really founding father of New Hampshire, John Stark, was amongst them as a colonel. They dragged those arms. They outnumbered Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut combined. 1,000 New Hampshire sitting there on that left flank, putting those cannons up. And at one point, General Stark knew that line was going to collapse. And as he stood there on that left flank, he told the other troops, leave, we will guard your back. And he stood there as long as he could with New Hampshireites, your brothers, your sisters, and guarded the retreat. And on that day, John Stark said, never again will I leave a line. Never again will the British defeat us. And a few years later, he had an opportunity 
to stand by those words. At the Battle of Bennington, with the Green Mountain Boys, he lined up once again on the left flank. Why is it always the left? Why? He stood up on that berm and he looked at the hired mercenaries called the Hushins. He looked at them, they were outnumbered. The Green Mountain Boys were sitting there shaking. He stood up on that berm, he took his sword out, and this is far better than the motto we have in New Hampshire. He took that sword out and he said, there they are boys, we defeat them here today, or Molly Stark sleeps a widow tonight. A line in the sand. What kind of man does that? Tell me, please. A New Hampshire. That's what's kind of man. We have liberty in our blood. We have feet made of granite. We draw those lines and we do not retreat. It wasn't much later, though, that we found ourselves in desperate times again as a Continental Army. And in the winter of 1776, George Washington had this great idea. Let's cross a river in the middle of winter on Christmas Eve. I'm sure his troops were just thrilled about this. The morale was terrible. They didn't have food. They were barely clothed. Yeah, let's hop in a bunch of boats, go across a freezing river, and fight the most educated, strongest, well-armed military known to man. Brilliant, George. But he, he had a plan. He did have a plan. And he recited these well-known words, already well-known long before he said them again. These are the times that try men's soul. The summer soldier, the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the heart of the conflict the more glorious the triumph. City council meetings are long, school board meetings are even longer. Standing out in the rain and the cold on April 15th doesn't seem like the thing we really want to be doing. But when you think about that, and when you stand there, think about those men getting in those boats with those words in their ears and rowing as hard and as fast as they could for victory. Not victory with weapons, but victory over the will of a tyrannical government that did not listen to them. They drew the land line in the sand, and they didn't listen. The last time they drew it, they did this. And from that point on, nothing has ever been the same for our country. And when we sit here and think about what we do next, I say to you right now, that as New Hampshireites, because I've officially made you all New Hampshireites, including our uh, Mike and Bryce and everyone else who came here to New Hampshire for this great conference, I've made them all New Hampshireites, and they're going to go forth. Because I tell you right now, it is going to be New Hampshire that will lead the way, as it has always done. It will be New Hampshire that will say, nullification? Hell, it's in our dictionary. We know what it means. It is time once again for New Hampshire to lead. It is time for New Hampshire to reestablish that we, the people, are the government. When was the last time you heard yourself say, the government keeps doing this to me? The government does this to me? The government makes me do this? You're the government! Stop relinquishing power to a far-off, distant, central, uncaring group of bureaucrats. You are the government. Deriving 
they're just powers from the governed, from the consent of the governed. I say to you now, we do not consent to deficit spending that will enslave future, future generations. We do not consent to an oppressive tax policy that punishes success but rewards poor behavior. We do not consent to bailouts of auto companies, banks, and individuals who fail to live within their means. We do not consent to the wholesale seizure of one-sixth of our economy with the takeover of the U.S. health care system, with the implementation of Obamacare. We do not consent. We are the government. We've had a long day, and I hope you've learned something here today. But I'm going to ask you one more favor. Our founding fathers are gone, but we must resolve to be a new generation of sons and daughters of liberty. I bet you all New Hampshire right, so you're automatically in the club, folks. We must be the defending fathers and mother mothers of our Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, I say to you, as New Hampshire writes, we have the ultimate line in the sand. Live free or die, death is not the worst of evil. There is no stronger line, there is no stronger fist, there is no stronger resolve than those words. We live them or we die trying. Sunshine Patriots, let us stand firm, let us stand on principle and integrity. And yes, when necessary, push back against an overreach of a federal government and enjoy the glorious God bless you, God bless New Hampshire, God bless our country, and live free or die.